excitability or muscular hyperexcitability. They end up in a bad الحالات the pathological muscular hyperexcitability goes to other side hypoexcitability. But still, they have no any they have no any clue about the uh, the mechanism of the action or relationship between the patchinism and the hyperexcitability or skeletal muscle hyperexcitability, even smooth muscles. Then, you know, the investigations, the studies improve in that side. In 1970, an American Society of Bacteriologists, they figure out a new microorganism and the name according to its shape, because the shape was spindle-like. We stuck the cluster name, which is Latin word, to describe the shape of Clostridium. And they figure out that the patulinism is caused by some type of Clostridium, which is anaerobic Clostridium patulinism. And then the scenario starts for this type of medication. And they figure out again, there are seven neurotoxins antigen from that bacteria, I mean, produced by that bacteria. What does it mean? It means we have seven future neurotoxins. Until 1946, in the United States, they started a therapeutic application of that toxins. Unfortunately, they found there is a big relation between some ophthalmological problem with I mean, there is a big therapeutic application on some ophthalmological problem to treat some kind of discoordination, asymmetrical movement of bilateral ocular muscles. So Dr. Scott in 1970s, ophthalmologist, he started using the, the, the botulinum toxin for the treatment of that strabismus. But still there was no FDA approval from the administration at that time, which is very important to use this medication, to publish this medication to make this medication applicable for any ophthalmologist at that time. Definitely the FDA approved, start their investigation, that treatment. And they, the treatment fortunately got approval in 1989. So from 1883 to 1980, so from 1983 to this that approval, was in 1989 in United States in Irvine, California. Then immediately after that, there is another project which is exactly the same with this with with the Bartox material in Europe, the Disport Botulinum Toxin A2. So they got approval too in Europe for another project with the name of the project Disport because Disport comes at that time came out from what? This means dystonia when there is disturbances or relaxes or blurrences of the muscle and and I mean, the, this, the, 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 the first part of this port, and the port came out from Porton, which is actually an United State, in, in, in the United Kingdom, there's a city which, which the project discovered at that city, at that time is supporting, that's what they saw this port. So now we have two projects with FDA and uh, CA approved from the United States and in, in Europe. And 1990 is actually a, 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 a very good, year for the Batex material, because after that, the whole approval will, FDA approval or FDA actually administration start to approve many facial treatment and aesthetic, uh, many aesthetic facial treatment with botulinum toxins. Look at, they start with what? They start with forehead first, first. and then they figure out the project, the, the product or the botulinum toxin A is actually part of the treatment of labular complex too. Then they, they got approval for cow's feet. The Europe after that immediately, they did the same thing. And then they figure out that treatment is important for to treat some kind of orofacial and cer cervical kind of dystonia. In Europe, they, they investigate that, they, they approve that too. So 1989, 1990 is very important date for the bachelor toxins. Uh, Mechanism of action, because we have to know how the process is done and how we get into this process. We can explain it, we can break it, and then we get the result that this project is not good or this company, that company is not good. No, 
there are many factors related to this process. The process of, of, of internalization of, of your botulinum toxin to the synaptic junction area is like that. If you look to this, to this slide, you're gonna see four faces. And these all four faces are important for internalization to start the neuromuscular blocking effect of the new, of botulinum toxin. When you inject the toxins, direct go to the what? To the end plate, muscular end plate, the presynaptic, the cholinergic area, which is depend on the sign, which is usually in the, in the normal condition, the contraction depend on the transmission of presynaptic acetylcholine to the postsynaptic. So with Botox material, we're gonna get four phases. The first phase is binding phase, the second phase internalization phase, and the third phase is translocation and the blocking phase, which is very important phase. The light chain of this neurotoxin protein, when enter or when it touch to the presynaptic, the phase is binding phase. When you go inside the presynaptic, it's gonna be vascularized or, or it's gonna be go inside the vesicles and then move inside the presynaptic. After that, the vesicle will rupture and this translocation phase, the, the light chains go to find where is the acetylcholine before it trans, before the release from its presynaptic through synaptic junction to the postsynaptic area. So blocking phase at this stage, the light chain of the protein, we're gonna attach what? They're gonna attach the acetylcholine and then blocking the acetylcholine front mass transmission to the postsynaptic uh, area. This is the action of the, or mechanism of the botulinum toxin. Then, they still investigating and they still studying which kind of botulinum toxin or which product is going to be produced by this botulinum toxin A. Actually, many companies, they start using this neurotoxin protein and they figure out they found four types. When you come to the Ayada or Mandubi, we call Botox. You have to Botox is different from this part and this part is different from Xeomine. And the fourth project is the Maya block on Euro block is still under FDA approval pending, still pending. Still, there is no FDA approval for this fourth project. If you read Maya block on Euro block, thank you so much. Go for Xeomine. Xeomine also have a new project, which is almost the same, just like Botox material. The same dose, but the good things with Xeomine, the new company, they figure out this material to store this material outside the refrigerators. So you're gonna, you, um, you are able to store this material under room temperature. So it's good for Xeomine. The dose is the same for the dose of this of Botox. The this part is almost the same of these three, those three, sorry, but the this part is, is supposed to be high, have to have more dose at the point of injection rather than this part, rather than Xeomine and Botox. So Xeomine and Botox are almost the same dose. While this part, you have to inject more, which is good for some reason and not good for other reasons. We will discuss the differences. For us, there is another scientific name. Maybe if you need ONA, it goes with Botox. ABO, it goes with this part from Europe. ABO, botulinum toxin A, for example, for this part. And I know it's xeomine. Rima botulinum toxin A is the my block is still under FDA approval uh, and waiting the FDA approval approval. So here we have to figure out when you read the whole things on A, A, B, O, and you know, this goes with Botox, this part, you mean all these three factors, the, our, this medication are under, uh, are approved by uh, FDA, by Food and Drug Administration, waiting the approval from my blog. So it's good. Still, we are using this part on Botox, Xeomine, which is, all of them are approved, but definitely when you read FDA approval, you have to figure out there are, uh, uh, several factors with FDA approval too. So if, sometime when you said, I have FDA approval, you can, you are able to ask them which class of FDA approval, because we have, we got three classes. We got class one FDA approval and class two and three. And one is actually is optimum and two is still intermediate level. So there's complication and three, there are many complications about any machine or device or products. So many question, now in your mind and my mind too, an answer the question, which one is better, Botox or this part? Many people, they ask you this question. Many patients will ask you this question. You expect this question anywhere, anytime. Definitely you have to get a scientific answer for that question. Don't depend on your experience because your experience, I'm sure any experience with botulinum toxin and the facial will be varied between patient individual to another individual. Will be varied according to the temperature, will vary according to the, to the, 
dissolvent or we said in, during dilution and we're going to discuss how to start dilution and how to use which kind of cell and have to use for dilution or reconstitution of botulinum toxin material many studies shows botox has superior efficacy i mean i'm not talking by myself these all scientific based evidence many studies shows that botox materials are high, has more or efficacy superior to the to, to this spot has more prolonged efficacy than this sport. Other study shows the opposite, the converse, that this sport is superior to Botox. And all these studies, actually I mentioned the studies, if you go back to read the articles, you can go back to read the article. Because I, this is a question several times, which one is better? Because I have many people, they got this sport from different country, different city and other, they got what well, they got, uh, Botox from other country. Should I mix between them? Should I use both? Uh, definitely you can use, but you have to know the doses of difference in the doses of both items. The third study shows almost the same, no difference between both. I would say there is no difference, but there's indication. There are many indications for each. And one side, this one better than the other side, that one is better, but superior for, to the other. Some other study shows no complaining evidence of both. So it definitely depends on experience and demands and on your individual case. Some people, they like Botox, they are used to use Botox. Okay, why not? The, you got the studies supporting your experience with buttons. Other people with this part, they got the study. That was uh, other people, they use both. Okay, you got studies supporting both. I know there's no difference. So go ahead with both. I'm not talking about Xiaomi because I have no experience. Xiaomi is a new project. They got a new approval. Definitely when you decide. These all slides, actually, I summarized the slide for the basic and history. I wish you got some information about the material history supporting the project in your front, your patient. The necessary tools that you have to prepare in your clinic to start your treatment, to start your injection, to start your uh, practice. For me, before when I was treating my patient, actually, honestly speaking, I tried to uh, complicate the things in front of my patient. I tried to avoid documentation. I not avoid, I have no idea. Like in the end, I learned even verbal, but I prefer both. Verbal, then verbal, level my patient Then you have to use electronic documentation too. Then you have to get camera, whether conventional or digital, to document the dynamic movement, the static defect. You have to document everything. Topical anesthesia, but never ever do as some uh, I, I got. Uh, I heard about the doctor, they mix lidocaine with, with buttocks to, to reduce the pain. When, you, when they start the solution, the reconstitution or dilution of the buttocks particles, the powder. Three cases of immediate anaphylactic shock because of this reason. That's why I try to write this reason in, in, in bold red. Don't mix lidocaine with buttox material or don't dilute the buttox material or particles with lidocaine. Topical disinfectant, I prefer to use topical disinfectant. Whether it's color or non-color, it depends. But I prefer to avoid any color material because to keep your wrinkles in front of your eyes, in front of your patient mirror. Because I usually show my patient I draw the lines with, with, with cosmetic pen, then I have to get documents for that things. Then I have to discuss verbally the pattern of your face, of my patient face, because we are discuss different pattern. Because some patient, I need to get this picture. I need just like my friend, like, just like my neighbor, just like my, my sister. Don't follow the patient. Each skin type different from each other. Each patient has different muscular pattern, depends on many things, skeletal or soft tissue things. The needle which are used is the 30 and 32 is the grade. So between 30 to 32, 30 to 32. Regarding the call packs, there are different, there are two, con, uh, two controversies about these things. One people, they prefer to do preoperative cooling with the skin before start injection. And the other people say, don't do cooling. Don't put ice pack unless you finish your treatment with your post-operative distraction. 
The study shows if you make cooling to the site of injection preoperatively, you're going to reduce the speed of toxin spread. There is a special name for the toxin or patient toxin in the facial aesthetic medicine. We name this spread as a spread profile or diffusion profile. When you're going to reduce the diffusion profile, spread the profile, it means you're going to delay or prolong the internalization, the phases of botulism to the end plate or muscular end plate or synaptic, specifically, literally, to the presynaptic area. So don't cool the area, just antiseptic, use antiseptic. I believe you have to get some shock kit or emergency kit for any reason. Uh, social media. The, many patients, they got puffiness and they get swollen or angioedema post, post botulinum toxin injection. So please prepare yourself to get emergency kit. Now, we will discuss the reconstitution solution matter. There are many questions about this normal saline itself. ملاحظين مرات يجي مريض تعطيه injection من saline معين بالمرة القادمة من other drip of saline and then you pay, you're the same patient, same individual you say, it's painful this time. What's going on? Not, not like the previous time. The last time was not painful like, like now. They discover there are two types of saline. I, I, I have to mention here, normal physiological saline means 0.9 sodium chloride because you have to use this type of normal saline. Don't use hypertonic and do not use the hypotonic. You have to follow the body tissue interstitial percentage of normal saline, like 0.9 sodium, because you are dealing, you are playing with interstitial spaces, compartment of the body tissue. Basically, we have preserved saline and we have preserved free saline. We prefer preserved saline. And the study shows, look at the study, because in Tementiji Tishtari Saline, al Iqra preserved with bacteriostatic agent. And there is some kind of uh, uh, alcohol which is actually reduced the, 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 the pain at the site of injection. That's why the study shows preserved saline, has 60% less of discomfort. Focus on this point, 60%. Other studies show 40, some, some studies show 50, and the range between 40 to 60 is not, is not actually easy things. You know, you have to think about preserved saline. The preserved saline is going to get a more patient satisfaction. And this is your aim. OK. The soal akhar, طبعا احنا نحاول نطلع لكم realities and methods of the, uh, the, the things. The soal akhar, هل اني من اعمل shaking ورا ما اعمل the dissolution, اعمل shaking or the dilution or reconstitution. How fast I have to go with my shaking? You know, I'm going to shake the vial. Should I shake aggressively or gentle? There are many studies shows that aggressive goes with less 42 potency loss. Almost 50% of your project is going to lose its potency and efficacy with aggressive shape. And the dramatic things again, the second dramatic thing with aggressive shaking, when you get someone is shaking the, 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 the vials aggressively, you, he's actually reduce the invasion of the presynaptic and increase and prolong the paralysis of the nerve end from 70 to 100 minutes, look at almost 40 or 30 minutes plus. And this time for internalization and time for blocking phase is gonna be prolonged. I don't like to prolong my session like 30 minutes be behind my session. I don't know what's going on after that. Maybe your patient move his head. I would like to get in, I would like to be precise at the site of injection, at the site of buttocks, at, at site of my point. I need my botulinum toxin go to the site of the point. I don't like to get what, the, there is a term in botulinum aesthetic medicine, retrograde axonal migration of the toxins. The toxin goes to different area. I'm injecting the muscles of the nasal part of the labular, and then I get my patient with asymmetry or droopy eye lip, uh, upper lip, for example. It is very far. It's not far actually, but it's far from my area of concern, but still you are paralyzing other different muscles out of your concern and your patient concern. 
concern, you're going to end up with dissatisfaction. So please think about retrograde botulinum toxins, and how can I, how can I reduce that? I have to think about these all factors. I have to get reduced pairs, reduce my invasion time to the spot at the time of injection. خليني بال 20 دقيقة بال 15 دقيقة المفروضة تكون ها أصل ال 100 دقيقة يلا يشتغل يتحرك إلى مكانات أخرى، هاي نقطة جدا مهمة. وهذا الـ prolongation because of your aggressive shaking of the solute or during reconstitution of the batex powder. These two keep into your mind preserve to reduce pain almost to 60%, which is better than topic honestly sometimes. Use preserve, normal saline, please, normal saline. So the other question about the volume itself. Some people, they say, I have 10, uh, sorry, I have 5 mil with meat 100, with, with 100 units. I'm going to mix or reconstitute 5 mil with 100 units. So the volume in general of your vial depends on the site of treatment. Basically, People dealing with the body like axillary hyperhidrosis, they would like to use high volume of the injection. While other people like working with aesthetic facial medicine, they like low volume. Do you know what I mean? They like lower volume. That's why with the, 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 the standard volume or the standard dilution of our normal saline is 2.5 mil for both this port, and we'll check the table later on. For both this port and Botox, regardless the particles or the efficacy of the products, 2.5. Oh, this, these are two tables showing actually the percentage and the dose and the, 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 the dilutional normal saline, and they show, according to the study, show that 2.5 mil is the standard between both products. So I usually use two to 2.5. It depends still, we'll discuss when I have to increase, when I have to reduce. So in general, we have to focus on 2.5 mil. With, don't forget, I prefer, I prefer personally preserve, Saline, normal saline, with gentle reconstitution shaking time to, to keep the Batex potency almost as it is prescribed by the manufacturer. And then to keep the Batex material invasion to the presynaptic within our 15, 20 minutes time. Another question or answer question, Everybody knows about the storage of the toxins, whether it's undiluted or diluted. In general, the undiluted one is safer. And definitely for both buttocks and this port, you have to store in the refrigerators between four to, to eight centigrade, but you should keep the items between two years to three years unless be expired. The XEO mean the new projects, which is FDA approved to, you are able to save it in the, for, in the room temperature. However, the other question, for how long I should keep or store my reconstituted, my diluted buttocks, there are many study shows starting from two weeks, ending with six weeks. But don't forget, according to the study, after during the last, I mean, the, last, the most recent study shows the efficacy, efficacy of the batch material would go back a little bit when I actually store more than two weeks. So, but still you can store it like according to the study to uh, six weeks. How the term is basic with batch on talks. history of basic, which we clinical. فدائما البيزك وال والهيستوري يكون مرات يعني بس هو ضروري حقيقه لان يعني هوايه اشياء نمر بها واخطاء نمر بها هي جاب تابعه للبيزك ليس للكلينيكال براكتس ليس للاكسبيرينس. The spread of the botulinum toxin actually subjected 
to many factors. The most important factor is the injection technique. I would like to say we have two techniques for botulinum toxin diffusion or spread or injection. Sorry. The first technique is the standard, and the name of the standard is macro injection or intradermal injection, or goes to actually muscular injection, but don't touch the periosteum. Try to avoid periosteum touch for many reasons. You know, the periosteum is highly vascularized. You're going to reduce the chemosis or post chemosis or hematoma by, by, by avoiding touching the periosteal. The superficial microinjection, the second technique, which I like to use this kind of technique for the new injectors, the new practitioner. The reason why I use superficial microinjection, there are many reasons. It depends on anatomical landmark, anatomical structure around me, like periarticular region. Some people, they like to inject the, the, the labular area with, with microinjection to stay intra, uh, to stay like subdermal, uh, sorry, to stay like intradermal, or to stay a little bit more superficial than the micro level. And then the sign that I did the, 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 the micro injection perfectly when you got lump, a white lump at the skin level. So at this stage, you are in good level of the botulinum toxin and my, if you are doing micro or superficial micro injection, especially at the superciliary area, at the tersal area, eyelid area, Many people, they prefer superficial microinjection. And how can, I did, how can I check my injection is incorrect or an incorrect way when you get this small whitish papule, so I'm incorrect, this is the microinjection. And definitely you have to use 32, it's great for this injection. The temperature has a big effect on your spread as we discussed, shaking to prolong the, the invasion, the spread, at the same, the aggressive change. Then the temperature, what does mean by that? When I cool the area before I inject, so you reduce the temperature from room temperature 37, maybe to 20. All these will affect the spread, the diffusion of your body. So you're delaying your spread of diffusion, maybe after your session, past operatively, and the patient starts his normal work, his normal life, and then unfortunately, he's gonna spread by to different, as I said, retrog retrograde, uh, 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 axonal uh, uh, botulinum spread, which is we don't like it. Again, we discussed the, the spread effect by what? By volume, by dose, and the angulation for me is important too. The angulation range between 30 to 90, but I prefer 30 degree to avoid any unactually expected dissatisfaction or any unexpected complication by doing direct to the periosteum or touching periosteum. Go with 30 degrees, especially in highly sensitive area. The speed, as I said in the previous slide, and I don't like to go to anatomical because we will discuss anatomical separately each in each part of the face. Definitely there are contraindication and drug entry reaction with botulinum toxin medication. The first one is the hypersensitivity and the hypersensitivity, especially the immediate or anaphylaxis is gonna be calm from many things. The most important, according to the study, when you mix the buttox and lidocaine. My senior gravis is a neuromuscular disorder. You have to think 100 times before you inject this patient. Otherwise, you have to explain verbally unwritten to do something for those patients. Just like neuromuscular facial palsy or Bell's palsy. I have to discuss the issue with the patient. Because sometimes patient has Bell's palsy, and we will discuss an advanced seminar about the Bell's palsy management. So you have to think that, you have to mention that in your verbal and electronical documentation on consent. Respiratory disease, because many patients, I, I heard in many, from many patients, they got like kind of dyspnea after the injection. It's not kind of uh, uh, pulmonary or respiratory maybe emergency, but they said, I feel this So respiratory disease, you have to get, you have to discuss these things if there is any history of any kind of allergy or any kind of respiratory attack. For the pregnant woman on nursing, again, there is uh, many realities about these 
two patients. I mean, patients with lact uh, lactating or nursing uh, women and pregnant. In general, all study shows try to avoid. There is no significant study shows there is interaction between pregnancy and lactation with batching of toxins, but try to avoid. All these study shows try to avoid. Again, any kind of anticoagulant or any kind of aspirin, you have to stop. You have to ask the physician to stop these because you're going to end up with the chemosis. And this is kind of regular uh, post of complication of anticoagulant. Antibiotic for me is important. If many patients, they actually, they thought there is no relation. So they don't, they try to, to avoid the, 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 to answer the question about the medication or antibiotic. They thought there's no relation. No, there's a big relation between two antibiotics. And then there is another study for penicillin too. So I mean, glycoside is the first study and the second one, metronidazole. They have drug reaction. Cyclosporine definitely is a kind of immune suppressor drug. And then, uh, other two drugs I have to mention, but it's actually is not common. شباب لازم نعرف الآن ماذا يعني شوية ماذا يحدث لل facial structure during aging process. <clears throat> there are two factors control of our aging process. One of them is genetic, with its genotype, like any structure in your body like genome phenotype in your gingival tissue and other structures. So we have two factors, genetic and environmental, and sometimes both. So the genetic factor has a big influence on the aging process. And the name of the genetic factor is the genotype or intrinsic factors. But sometimes out of your control, it's a family factor, the genetic factor, genetic map of each family different from each other. While the environmental one, you, can, you are able to control that. You are able to actually uh, to manage it. Again, the genetic factors goes with chronological process. What's going on? I got my face sagging a little bit more than before. Yes, the gravity. And unfortunately, with the age, the whole depressor muscle will be active more than elevators muscle. Hello, bad one. But this mass layer with connective tissue, it's, it's actually part of your sagging. And there is, there is more, no more support to the, your fatty parts in your face, the cheek, the zygomatic, which is actually the most important part in the aesthetic condition. And the physiological benefit of these fat or buccal parts, as you know, the greasing or lubricating your face movement, during movement of your face, expression, mastication. So the whole thing goes through tunnels and usually goes through nasolabial fold ending in submental uh, sub area. So depressor more active than the elevators with aging. The environmental factor in aging process is different from the, the genetic factors, maybe sometime under your control. Like patient, outdoor patient, photo damage more, and they got dry skin more. So plus the whole factors related to different environmental agents, chemicals, physicals. And all these factors will affect the genetic behavior too. So combination of both. Okay. With this aging process, you're gonna hear a different terms like right to this or wrinkles. Both are almost the same, but wrinkles goes deeper when the fold or lines goes deeper. So the name is wrinkle rather than rights. And there's another important name, and you have to include these two names in your evaluation or pre-op evaluation, is whether it's dynamic wrinkles or static or both. Here we have to focus on these terms, and you have to investigate your patient before you start any treatment. And you have to write down the type or the pattern of the muscle, which is very important because I have to follow up my pattern. Should I change my pattern? Should I, uh, do I change my pattern? Or should I keep the pattern? Maybe she, maybe she like it, maybe I reduce a little bit the pattern. Or the pattern will stay after this patchinum toxin treatment. I have to combine the treatment with other modalities. Don't promise patient 
unless you diagnose the patient pattern. We have three patterns. And according to three patterns, we're going to classify the wrinkle severity scale like what? Zero, one, two, three. So we're going to focus on the hypercantric and hypertonic. It's not important for me. We have to assess the patient in which pattern or which category. Kinetic patient in general are very satisfied patient. They're going to like your treatment. But unfortunately, if they go to the jiran, if the jiran has a hypertonic, you see the jiran to show you that you can do with botox everything and you don't get the result of the hypertonic, so please, evaluate your dynamic pattern of your patient face first. Kinetic, when you got the patient, you got the frozen look. There is no any wrinkles. But when you ask the patient to do any movement, like patient, your patient said, I have vertical lines around the glabular area. So when you ask your patient to squeeze the glabular area, you're going to see the line. But when, there is the lack, when you ask the patient to relax, there, there is no more line. This kinetic just during the movement, I like it. You have to think about botulinum toxin in this kind of pattern, and this kind of muscular pattern, and this patient pattern. Maybe you're gonna promise your patient with this kind of pattern, I'm sure you're gonna get good results. We have no other also Maria DB, but I have to mention that in my paper. ومع ذلك بعض الاستديو وجهت اشياء اخرى قد نناقشها انه ممكن ما تلقى اشياء اخرى تتطور وما تفحصها ما تقدر تفحصها لان انت خطات بالدايناميك انستراكشن الهايبر كاينتيك شنو فرق عن الكاينتيك؟ يجيك مريض مرات راح احكيها بالعربي مساعد يعني حتى يكون اوضح اسهل يجيك مريض مرات وتعمل له انستراكشن تو موف جلابلر اريا Squeeze or medialization of the intercanthal area. راح تشوف line اللي هو إجاك عليه المريض ركز عليه اللي هو إن the vertical and the glabular area. This is area of concern. Okay, and the topic that this area has no problem with. But with 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 kinetic, okay, you see how it opens and it closes from any angle. While with hyperkinetic, you see what I'm saying. With hyperkinetic, when you move the glabular area, you're going to check, you're going to see another concern in different region. When I ask my patient to get a movement around the glabular complex area, you're going to get lines in the forehead area too. Maybe you don't see it, but with action, with action, you did it, you did it, you did it, you did it, you did it. This type of patient, I have to think, I have to discuss. I will tell my patient, please, when you do this action, you get another area. Another wrinkle in different area out of our concern and your concern. But we have to put this one in our concern now because you have hyperkinetic part, not the kinetic. If you stay at this level of, of your, if they stay at this level of gabular, I best have to the gabular or the forehead, you have to go to the kinetic side. You have to go to the gabular, but you forehead. But if I have a gabular, I have to have a gabular almost kinetic or almost nothing. I'll treat it like frozen. So hyperkinetic, area of concern and surrounding area. Kinetic, just area of concern. If you ask me to get to the area of concern, you can't get to the area of concern. If you ask me to get to the area of concern, you can't get to the area of concern. You can't get to the area of concern. You can't get to the area of concern. The most critical patient is the hypertonic patient. Because this patient is not be satisfied, it's not will be satisfied with your vaginal toxin alone. Because this patient have deep group. When you ask him to do some movement, there is a deep group. The group stay in its place. When I ask to relax the muscle, the group stay in its place. And the group is deep. Maybe when I inject the area, the group become more shallow, but it's still in its place. And still I see groove. And the patient insists, I saw my groove after your injection. Because you, are, you forgot to discuss the pattern or you forgot to evaluate your patient pattern. This is a hypertonic patient. With hypertonic patient, I have to combine other kind of treatment. For example, I have to mix, I have to, sorry, I have to combine, I have to add another session. Then I have to add check, and then I have to add another filler material, whatever, uh, whatever you do for the next stage. But you have to discuss with hypertonic patient. Never ever got frozen with hypertonic patient. Never. It's hard. I, I, I don't like to say never, but with botulinum toxin, it's very hard. 
So hypertonic is actually a, a, a aesthetically compromised a little bit. So think about the pattern, think about this classification. No need to classify deep, severe. I would like to classify the pattern of the muscle action. This scale is important too, but not like the pattern. But you have, when you got your patient, <clears throat> for some reason, the study shows, the study follow the skin types, they figure out they have six skin type starting from class one, two, three, four, five, ending with six. The first upper two are white skin, Swedish skins goes with very delicate skins and they have high sensitivity to the sun exposure and very high elasticity. That's why they got too much, too many wrinkles, actually at what? At the, at the cross feet area. If you go to the fair skin, it's the best. If you go down more, you're gonna go to the what? To the black skin. The liability for, the, I know the black skin has less wrinkle because more collagen, while the, the, the upper white skin, they have more elastic fiber. So they get more wrinkle at the, uh, when they express to the light. Then which one is better? The fair skin is better. You have to explain that for the white skin, maybe you got, you need extra, maybe you got uh, uh, chemosis because the skin is thin. With white, with the black skin, black, black skin you have to uh, talk about the, uh, uh, you have to talk about the, uh, uh, some kind of scar formation of the blacks. The clinical application of the botulinum toxins. Today, maybe we, will dis we have time still, we have 30 minutes. We will discuss the forehead and the glabella and the cross feet. And next session, we're gonna start discussing something important for the, uh, the middle face and the gummy smile, and upper lip. And, the and then maybe if you have time, go to the cobblestone. The advanced one, it goes with what? It goes with like management of facial palsy, for example and some kind of uh, uh, hypercellosis. Oh, so it depends, you know, according to your interest. And not only interest, but speciality too. We will start discussing the frontal region. If you look to this slide, why I have to show you the topic of, of the topographic of the bony topographic of the forehead region. Definitely I have to show you why I insist to to read the topography of the forehead before I start injecting the forehead muscles. Palpate the area. According to the study, we have two separate skull design or pattern between different between differences between male and female. The differences are, if you go to the right side of the slide on the male side, you're gonna see the supraciliary ridge or supraorbital ridge is more prominent in male pattern topography or skull topography. If you are talking about the applied clinical application for this topography is important for us because this prominency is gonna protect the injections, gonna protect the botulinum toxin from going inside orbital cavity, just like a, a hill. It prevents to go to the supraorbital foramen, then goes to the suprapalpebral muscles, olivator superior muscle. And then you're gonna end up with what? With lidiptosis. And we will show you some management of lidiptosis too. The second aesthetic issue with that thing, with this prominence, fair sun, the functionally it's protective. But if you go back to your treatment, and then I have to decide to inject the ciliary, superciliary area or glabular area, the corrugator superciliary muscles and the forehead at the same time. I know I protect myself with this supraciliary ridge, but still, the technique at the glabular region is important for me. If I go with micro standard at the superciliary area, this ridge area, I mean, go deeper, maybe still I have chance to spread the, 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 the botulinum toxin inside the orbital. But I prefer to use my second injection technique, which is more superficial, more lumpy, white lumpy. It means when I got this lump, just like papules, I mean, correct way. Yeah. Is a micro injection. So definitely, if I'm beginner, a new injector, new practitioner, I prefer to use that. 
Some people, they advise to use this port because this port, as you said, they have higher dose to reach the buttocks of the buttocks. But if I'm new, maybe I will use this port with the same dose of buttocks. So it's gonna be less potency, less potent, but still I'm protecting my patient eye, especially if your patient had history of ptosis. So by, by, by using technique, correct technique, by palpation, still I have this superciliary prominency, I'm going to protect the things, the orbital ocular muscle. If you go to the left side, this is the topography, skull topography of the female side. In the female side, I have more lip doses because of this thing, not because of incorrect sound. Usually, usually, because of post of extraction or massaging, incorrect massaging. But, but if you go to the topography of the skull has a big, big issue at this area in the female side. If you don't put your finger, for example, if you are deep, if you, are deep, if you inject your patchulum toxin deeply using micro injection, definitely with this topographic, I have to use micro injection technique. 32 gauge micro injection sometimes, I use this part. If my patient had history or patient relative had history, or, because I don't like to put my patient waiting his ptosis or looking for ptosis, he tried to check his lid by himself and create ptosis. So put your finger because they have nothing topographically at this area like male pattern. The, second, the second important things with the female topography at the forehead region, especially female with cap or female with high hairline, Look at the prominence of the frontal prominence, palpate the prominence. This is more prominent and your patient asks for frozen, bald forehead, tell her, your topography is not all female, I said. I, most of the female, they got this topography. Tell her when I got frozen forehead, maybe you get this one is a prominent, especially your hairline is high. At the same time, think about the depression, triangular depression between two forehead prominency, so again, you have to mention that in your records. So these are differences between both. As you know, the muscle of the forehead, which is responsible for the forehead, is the of frontal occipitalis muscles. Muscle, the frontalis muscles is part of occipital frontalis muscle. It's the elevator. And then the antagonist of these muscles, you know that, is the circumocular muscles including the glabular muscles. So the frontalis muscle is elevator, but recently I will show you what they found. And the antagonist of these muscles is the ocular muscle and circumocular muscles. Definitely, upward reaction. So I wanna get information about which part of the muscle working now, is the medial part or the lateral part? or both, I have to classify, I have to think to avoid misplicotine signs, uh, to avoid uh, too much elevation of the lateral third of the forehead. So Carl Herman classification for me is important regarding the classification of forehead muscle because some muscle with the class one goes with, with the medial part contraction, other muscle with, bi with lateral, and then bilateral, medial and lateral. So check the side of muscle action or hyperexcitability side. Then I will start my dots. Regarding my dots, I have to think about many things as we discussed. I have to, away, to be away one cm from supraciliary ridge, the supraorbital ridge, to protect my eye, to protect my patient ocular muscle from the seepage, from the leak of botulinum toxin, which is unwanted to do. Four to six point, one to two lines, one cm above the superciliar ridge. Micro injection is safe here, while micro, if I go a little bit more down to the supra area or glabular area. Regarding the difference in doses between buttocks and this port, as I mentioned, as you see in the slide, we have 10 to 15 units buttocks for each line. And I don't, like, I don't like to extend more than 30 units for the forehead region. For this port, 
I have to increase the dose. As I send the new sport less potency, you have to double or triple or make it four times of the buttocks. If you have concern about the CPG of the tire cell, of, about the ptosis, you have to keep your butt passport dose a little bit less or almost the same like buttocks to get less potency. Most of us, including the speaker, when you, are, when you test the frontalis muscle, you will ask your patient to elevate the forehead up or down. I mean, toward cranial direction. And then you will see next time, you will see the patient after first session, and the patient will tell you, still I have wrinkles or lines in front of my, when I see my face. When I saw my face this morning, I found there is another wrinkles. When you ask your patient, make the same dynamic action, upward direction, there is no line because you inject your bacterial toxin according to the picture before. The study shows, and this is very interesting actually, lecture, uh, seminar, uh, American Association of Aesthetic Medicine. It's the bidirectional movement of the frontalis muscle. And look at, actually, we shocked when we got, when we check the patient, we found 60% of your patient has upward movement. At the same time, they have 39% downward movement. And if you test your forehead, that's right. We have two directional, bi-directional movement of the frontalis muscle. Upward direction, downward direction. How do I know? How I have to mention where is the line, where is the demarcation between two actions? So 61 person upward direction at the first level of the frontalis muscle, then 39 direction downward at the top of your muscle. The line between two movement, at OSM, C line, is a line of convergence. You have to draw this line with each patient nowadays, because you are, you're gonna find two different movement at the forehead area, forehead region. The C line is the second line from the first line downward and the second line from the line upward. So in the middle, when you draw this line, this is your safety C line or line of convergence. Above this line, everything's safe. Unless you are contouring or recontouring your glabular area. So check the movement of, your, of the patient's forehead from both sides. Ask your patient to elevate the bra and ask him to close and check where is the downward movement and the upward movement and put your line and usually the line in the middle. Now, we want to gonna discuss or the globular region. Again, you have to check the topographic, almost the same. I don't like to repeat the topographic. Supraorbital region, almost the same for male and you know the, the things the things for female is a frontal eminence eminence so detect the things by palpation of the topographic of the skull pattern again you have to know the muscular complex of the glabular region the muscular or the muscle of the glabular region are three muscles that's why this this region is different from the uh, frontal area in this region, we have two lines. We have horizontal and vertical lines. The horizontal lines usually from the procellus, the purple one. And the vertical lines from two muscles, the corrugator and the depressor supercell. All these three muscles you have to inject. Starting with three dots, one in the middle of the procellus and two to two other muscles. To, to relax the horizontal and to relax the vertical. In this slide, there is two pattern, one for female and one for male. And it depends, but basically we have two lines. 
And the lines should be like V-shape in women. When I draw my globular area, I have to put my five points in V-shape design. While if I go to the male side, I have to use Y-shape design. Because most of the female, they like to elevate the lateral part of the eyebrow more than male. Male mostly go to the what? Go to the natural, and female it goes more aesthetic pattern. So I have to choose V design for the glabular frown area and the female pattern, while Y shape design and the male pattern, almost both are five points. And the central points goes to the processor's muscle. Look at the picture at the top of the two pictures, the anatomical chart. This is the purple one, is the, the, the pair, which is responsible for the horizontal wrinkle. As the process, one dot is fine. And another two dots goes to the two other muscles from both sides, it's a corrugator and the depressor. All are depressor muscles. All are antagonists to the frontalis muscle. And then the, the distance between each is around 0.5 to 1 cm. As I said, especially with pattern of with, with female pattern, I try to use the the pinching technique with micro injection to be more superficial. And some studies they prefer to use with the tabular area is the disport material because this potency. And then we will discuss the post obstruction for these two cases, I mean, these two areas. But try to discuss the important things with your patient. The things that actually you have to mention, some patient, and this depends on the nasal bone structure. And I will show you the design of different nasal bone structure when we discuss the bunny lines. Then discuss that with the globular area patient that maybe you got broadening or widening or flattening of this area. Some patients, they don't like it, especially those patients with eyeglass. However, the dose start from 10 to 20 units divided in, on these five, with this port, I have to increase to double the dose. I don't like to go to do triple or, th of or four times of the buttocks, stay with double, especially with, with the glabular frown area. So VY technique is separate technique for each sex pattern. The combination between forehead and the glabular, which is most of the pattern used nowadays, are the combination between the glabular and the forehead muscles or forehead region. In general, as, as we mentioned, 15 to 20 each area, so don't extend, don't exceed 40 uh, units for both. I don't like to exceed 40 units for both area. And when I do combination, and still I have to respect the VY shape for women and men. And then some women, they like to raise more the lateral one, but try to avoid uh, signs. We will discuss the signs as a, some kind of this satisfy pattern. If it's a sign when they got a devil-like face. So think about that when you have to discuss this, this shape with your patient. For the parent, for, for the forehead area, still I have to inject with using standard micro injection. With the glabular area, I have to shift the micro-injection to the micro-injection place. And then, when should I play with the lateral third of the of eyebrow? You have to draw this line, imaginary line, from the nasal ala, going through the pupil, center of your pupil, Upward, then I'm going to draw the triangle at the forehead area. This is actually the most critical triangle. And this triangle actually is going to differentiate between two patterns, between male and female. So this, this picture for combination. The last one on the right for patient needs to be raised her, the lateral forehead. And don't forget go to the Karl Hermann classification and you have to evaluate if the muscle is, has more activity, lateral part of the portalis muscle. So you're gonna put yourself in problem. So that's why I said you have to classify the pattern of the tonicity of your muscle 
and the classification according to the Karl Hanman pattern, the third part or the lateral third of the face. What should I told my patient with both technique? When I got glabular on forehead or forehead alone, or just the glabular area. Basically, according to the study, six hour head elevation is important. Avoid horizontal positioning or lowering face. Massaging of the muscle should be, should be with your instruction. You have to direct the massaging like upward direction. And then don't massage the muscle immediately, please. Because you're gonna direct the spread away from your points. You're gonna migrate the patchulum toxin through a mechanism, which I said before, uh, the retrograde axonal migration of the patchulum toxin it would go to the area of out of your concern and wanted response you're gonna get. The, the cooling should be start before or after or during? This is a good question. Many people, they start cooling. I was doing that when I read the articles and I review myself, I said, no, don't do that because you're gonna prolong the, prolong the binding action of the buttox, the spread profile of the buttox. So keep the cooling after the treatment. The spread of botulinum toxin depends on temperature too. So room temperature is much better than 20% at the site of injection. This is mephistocyne when you got a combination between glabular and forehead muscle plus hypertonic or class three, according to the Carl When there is too much activity, hyperexcitability at the lateral part of the frontalis muscle. So if I use the pattern, the third one, for hyperactive excitability muscle of the lateral part, you're gonna end up with mephistocyte, which is easy to treat, but you know, you're gonna put yourself in back and forth with your patient, argument with your patient. So I, I would like to, if you explain that you have hyperactive and the, and the lateral, maybe it's gonna, your patient will accept your explanation because she, she understands that you are uh, uh, diagnose the, the problem individually because this depends on each individual because I don't like to, 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 to uh, I don't like patient to say, I wanted this picture, I wanna see, see like this, like my neighbor or no, different because each patient has different number of nerve receptors at the site. Even the nerve receptor and the same individual is gonna be changed. It depends on the repeated botulinum toxin injection. The another complication, not complication, temporary complication, post up after post-operative glabular or forehead is the upper eyelid ptosis or droopy eyelid. We expect this one in the upper lip, and so we expect this one too. And we expect this one in the female topographic pattern, as I said, the skull, there is no prominent supraciliary ridge or in the deeper or micro standard injection at the time or without protecting the eyebrow with your finger, put your finger, when you put your finger and you come with your needle, you're gonna find yourself in 30 degree already. And then don't forget with each periocular or injection or perioral injection, stay away, keep your needle, away from the orbital side. One similar and the direction away from the orbital structures. Because I don't like to go to the other complication like last trauma, like other ocular uh, muscles. شباب نبقى ربع ساعة احنا ان شاء الله لازم حتى النقابة يعني قطني خبر ساعة على ساعة ونص بقى لي ربع ساعة حاول اخلص بعض الكيميكال بها. أبرا كلونيدين اي دروبس نقدتنا من هالموضوع. طبعا ophthalmologist should, should be actually, should get advice of that ophthalmologist when you get this incidence. It's very low, it's 4.25 percent, but they approve that. Fortunately, when you get leak of the patchium toxin to the levator superior muscles, there is another muscle, the name of that muscle is malar muscles, 
underneath that muscle and originate that muscle, supply by different nerve, not cholinergic, supply by, by, by adrenergic supply. So there is agonist for that muscle is the apraclonidine, which is actually, it's gonna help your patient two or three drops, two or three times daily. Plus, I would like to use a special trick for this kind of patient and other kind of upper lip weakness. I usually ask my patient to get a new electrical toothbrush with vibration. And then you have to use the back of the brush on the tarsal plate and start vibrating the plate. It's good massage, not immediately. I mean, after two or 10 days after the settlement of the botulinum toxin in its place, and you figure out that your patient has ptosis, go with this mechanical vibration massaging using this one. This is very nice and very practical. And many people, many practitioners, they like to use it. Okay. This contraindication, I mean, the complication, past up which is self-limiting, that's happened with me too. One time I got patient, I thought she has some kind of a trauma. She said, no, after five, 10 days of my second session, she got this kind of depression. And then I check what's going on with this buttocks injection. I keep in my mind when I test the skull, everything's perfect. There, there is no any, any reputation. The only things I got, depression, soft tissue depression. Then I check, there is many articles shown a sign special to the forehead injection. And the name is morphe-like lesion. And the lesion histopathologically is gonna show atrophy of the muscle. Maybe I, I repeated at the same point, أكيد ما متقصد بس ما حسيت خليت النقطة مرة أخرى أو repeated or the dose or the speed of injection is gonna make some kind of atrophy muscle which is actually your patient don't like that but it's fortunately as it and there is no management don't put filler or something to, 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 because if you diagnose the case which is actually now many cases like that reported before they reported the case as case report, but now there are many cases with this atrophy. Morphe like. So don't be surprised. <clears throat> the bunny line, the bunny line actually is a nasal bridge crease or wrinkles related to the nasal is only unusually horizontal. If you go to the anatomy of the nasal structure, Starting the topograph, look at the nasal structure. You have to check the nasal area. You have to check out the nasal bone with, please, before you start to inject the nasals. Why I said that? Because maybe if you inject the, the, the area of nasalis, you're going to maybe inject the area of levature labia superior, lacunasi, which is related to the upper lip complex. Upper lip complex is UC point. And this point, Sorry, UNC point, not UNC. I, I will correct that for you. The UNC point actually is the point where the alacrinase and levator, uh, levator labia superioris and the levator, uh, uh, the alacrinase with levator superioris pull the upper lip at this point, which is actually the same function for gummy smile. When you got gummy smile, hyperactive area, so you got gummy smile, you'll have to paralyze this point. For some reason, if you are not touching where is my bone, maybe you inject this area rather than nasal. So you have to find your nasals according to the level of your nasal bone. So palpate to evaluate the width of nasal bone. How can I check that? Ask your patient to elevate one side of his lip, and then you can feel where is the, the point. And then you have to think about that point. You have to go medial to that point to avoid what? The asymmetrical movement of the upper lip, which is ptosis like of the upper eyelid, 
And then you're going to end up with a speaking problem and chewing a problem. I'm, uh, let me know. Blah, blah, blah. So please try to avoid it by doing this test. Check the nasal bridge width. Check the activity of the nasal elevator, especially the elevator alacrinase, labial alacrinase. And then you decide to use two or three points. <clears throat> As I said, for a critical area, use micro-injection to stay more superficial. Don't touch the periosteum of the nasal structure. As you know, this is a bloody structure, it's highly vascularized structure. So ecchymosis, I got patient, many patients before with ecchymosis, but I got more ecchymosis with this kind of injection. So definitely when I start pointing my, or placing my dot, after checking the nasal bridge with, after checking the nasal, the upper lip movement at this area, then I decide where I put my dots. And then I have to use the micro-injection technique, putting my finger to get this 30 degree elevation to avoid direct rotation, periosteal rotation. And then we're gonna end up with what? With ecchymosis and you know, some patient, they don't like it. Two or three dots is fine for me. After, I, after my evaluation, which is a dynamic and static evaluation, and the dose two to five units only, Again, for the dashboard, you have to increase the dose six, sorry, six to 15 on both sides, on both sides. And maybe I have to add another dot if I have more than line. In this left slide, left picture, you can see three lines, three dots at the side of nasalis or bunny line. Usually when I horizontal, it depends on the bony structure or underlying bony structure. This case got ecchymosis a little bit, or can say hematoma because there's a swelling. Immediately after nasal injection, I mean two or three days. But still she has nothing with the upper lip, fortunately. I have five minutes to start cross feet maybe? Yes. We can discuss the cross feet too. Again, دائما انا من اقرر منطقة احاول اتخيل البونز والمسلز اللي موجودة والسكن تكستشر والباترن نفس الوقت بحركة واحدة اقدر اقررها مع ملمس المنطقة اتلمس المارجن اوف ذا كراس فيت اريا هي اللاترال بوردر اوف يور اربيتال مارجن ويتش از فيري امبورتنت بيكوز ادنا 6 او 7 اي دونت لايك تو جو مور وذ كلاسيفيكيشن بات ذير ار 6 اولموست 4 كلاسيفيكيشن اوف ذا لاترال بوردر ثيكنس اجين جاست لايك سوبر سوريال ريتش if it's not a prominent, maybe you introduce your, your injection. If you are going to the, toward, the, toward the eye side, please put your, put your syringe theory, 1 cm from the lateral border, 30 degree away from orbital structures, because maybe you're going to paralyze the lateral rectus. You're going to paralyze the lacrimal apparatus. If you go downward, you may be paralyzed the cheek muscles and then upper lip muscle. So I don't like to go there, specifically go to the lateral 1CM from lateral border. And then you have to figure out the classification of Kraus feet itself. It's class one or two or three, because I will show you the classification too. And as you know, the, the spinicular muscles, the depressor muscles is the orbicularis oculi and the palpebral part of the orbicularis oculi because it has three parts, orbicularis oculi, and palpebral tarsal of the clip. Crouch feet classification depends on the line of wrinkles, starting from mild, intermediate, and severe. <clears throat> That's why I said maybe you got <clears throat> cheek dropping or up, up, <clears throat> upper, <clears throat> upper lip dropping too. If you extend the injection downward to the cheek side, maybe you drop the cheek. <clears throat> so if you go down, with the third picture, if you want to paralyze, think about micro-injection too. Think about 30 degree. Think about to be stay away from the direction of your structure. Basically, we have three parts, but <clears throat> usually you get intermediate type of cross feet. 15, six to 15 units is the maxima. Those for each side. This part should be double. 
I don't like to make trouble with this area because still this area is critical for me. <clears throat> I would like to show you this slide. Uh, some people, they prefer to come from opposite side of your patient head. So the solution, the spread goes away from your orbital structures. Still you expect post-operatively, like any kind of injection, ichymosis and hematoma. But if you go with third classification and you have to add another line of injection, maybe you expect droopy cheek or droopy upper lips. So you have to think about micro-injection and the dose should be reduced or sometimes this port if you like. Some study shows some kind of blink reflexes, abnormal reflexes, lacrimal tearing, pumping, cyclical are showing. So I don't like to go there. It's very actually complicated and very rare. Shabab, we are going to the time and we will be able to the first session. Sorry, I don't know what I'm So, we don't know if we can the time of the library and the How long should I stay for the questions? But inshallah, I will ask you an email if you have to try to send a picture and I will be able to see some of the online. Let's talk about it and see your opinion. And we'll be able to see the evidence and see how we can solve some of the issues. So if you want to ask, I'll be happy. And thank you for your attention. In fact, it's a real time and I'm sure you'll be in the exams. حال اشكركم انا جدا واذا حابين المحاضره ان شاء الله المحاضره القادمه تكون مور ادفانس او قبل ما تكون ادفانس راح نكون ميدل ثيرد ولور ثيرد نجو تو ذا نبوت ادفانس ستكشر اوكي شباب شكرا جزيلا لك دكتور نتقدم لك بالشكر الجزيل باسم نقابه اطباء الاسنان بالعراق الممثله بالسيد النقيب والسيد رئيس اللجنه العلميه الدكتور سيد الحويزي ونتقدم بالشكر الى شكرا جزيلا لك دكتور ونتقدم بالشكر الى زملائنا على حضورهم وحاليا المجال مفتوح اذا زملائنا يحبون يسالون حاليا او يتواصلون معك عبر الايميل لارسال اسئلتهم. اشكرهم. دكتور مصطفى دكتور مصطفى عندك سؤال؟ مصطفى احسان. سؤال من دكتوره تبارك، دكتور بس نوع السلاين وتاثيره. دكتوره تبارك انا اكدت لك انه انا غلطت من بالسلاين وممكن ما كنت مركز على السلاين. ولذلك السلاين أو السلين مثل ما يسمى احنا ممكن مريضي نفسه انا صارت عندي مريضي نفسه ما دا اتذكر غيرت السلين او لا استل اي فيل بين نوت لايك ذات بريفيوس سيشن سو اي ثوت ذا تمبرشر اوف ذا سلين از امبورتنت تو اي ثوت ذا تمبرشر اوف سلين از ذا سورس اوف بين ميبي سم تايم وان انجكت ا كولد سوليوشن از غانا كرييت بين Vasoconstriction can create some kind of pain. No, I put my saline in the tap water, and then I keep the saline under room temperature. I have sometimes pain, discomfort. So I was looking for which kind of saline with this kind of pain or discomfort. Then I figured out there's a preserved saline. Then I go to the literature, and I check the literature and the evidence. There is a preserved. So we we found two type of saline. The preserve and preserve free. Preserve means there's a bacteriostatic agent in the solution, and there is alcohol just to reduce the pain of the injection. According to the FDA, for botulism, for botulism toxin, go with the preserve. And ask, and you can read the preserve. Is preserve or non-preserve or free preserve? So please use that one. The second thing, important thing with saline, you have to think about physiological normal saline is a 0.9 sodium chloride. Don't use hypo or hyper because you have to match the body interstitial because you are playing the game in the backyard of interstitial compartment. So keep your saline as the normal physiological saline, which is compared with body fluid or with interstitial tissue. طبعا زملائنا راح ناخذ بس عدد من الاسئله دكتور سؤال اجانا دكتور can we inject botox with patients who recently took covid-19 vaccine? Actually, there are many investigations now and studies regarding the Botox and the, 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 the vaccination, which is still early to answer this question. But with filler, they got three cases. Actually, according to the American Academy of Facial Aesthetic and Triple Academy of Facial Aesthetic, they found three cases with filler injection 
they have issue with the COVID-19, but it's still early to, to say there is a, a scientific relation between both. Regarding the botulinum toxin, in general, botulinum toxin is antigene, according to my information, is antigene. And this antigene is a bacterial antigene. Like, for example, Clostridium uh, botulinum is a neurotoxin protein, and the protein has, has antigenic action against some kind of antibody. And again, there, is this, there are many studies shows the antibody reaction to the patox material. That's why we get allergy and hypersensitivity. The COVID-19 vaccination go to the viral side, but playing the game with immune system too, especially the T cell. So I prefer to stay away to answer this question because I know there is a study about filler material, but I try to I try to approach the question from my mind, from my background. That one is viral, and this one is bacterial. Antigenicity goes to the antibody to bacteria. That one goes to the viral antibody uh, reaction. So it's maybe different, but there is no study shows there is any drug interaction between both. But there is a study that shows immune suppressive drug like cyclosporin has a big drug interaction with the botulinum toxins. تمام دكتور زملائنا راح نستقبل حاليا سؤال وبالنسبه لباقي الاسئله للزملاء راح يكون عندنا جزء ثاني لهذه المحاضره مثل ما وضح المحاضر وان شاء الله اللي بعد عنده اسئله يقدر بالجزء الثاني ايضا يطرحها فحاليا راح نستقبل اخر سؤال من دكتوره حوراء تقول بي دكتوره حوراء دكتور ذكرت يفضل عدم استخدام الليدوكين مع البوتوكس ماذا نست... اذا ماذا نستخدم لتقليل اذا ماذا نستخدم ماذا نستخدم اذا لتقليل البين توبيكا I will give you, I will summarize that for you, please. I will summarize. <clears throat> Sorry, <coughs> I will summarize that for you guys. First of all, write down these, these notes. First of all, preserve saline. It will gonna reduce from 40 to 60, depending on the patient's pain threshold. From 40 to 60% of the patient pain and discomfort. If you look at the preserved saline, you know that who be be mad that had the month of injection. Preserve saline. Look at our preserve saline first. So until the 16 million, I'll let him tell him. Shouldn't be scared. Topical anesthesia. Why cream at the end? Not ointment, please. Cream. Cream. A water salt. I mean, the difference of from being ointment to cream. So, with topical and a preservative, you're gonna reduce the pain. Post up cooling ice pack. It's important to use post operative pain too. Okay, guys. Some people, especially in United States, they use special device. online Amazon. It's my skin vibrator. If you don't like that, if you don't have that, you can buy any kind of massaging vibration. And use the gate theory. Most of the people in the academies, they use gate theory. They put the lesson, put the vibrator on the other side of the injection and start vibration before the injection. And there's another type of vibration for gate, for pain gate theory is come, comes come out with, with, with lighting, which is good for you too. But, but preservative with topical and cost of cooling is the best protocol to reduce the pain discomfort after batching of toxin injections. I wish I answered your question. تمام دكتور اذا حاليا زملائنا الاعزاء بالنسبه لموعد المحاضره الثانيه راح يتم التنسيق عن المحاضر ان شاء الله لتحديد الموعد وتابعوا صفحه المكتب الاعلامي لنقابه اطباء الاسنان بالعراق واللي راح ينزل بيها التاريخ والوقت للمحاضره الثانيه. بختام هذا اليوم اتقدم بالشكر الجزيل مره اخرى للمحاضر واتقدم بالشكر لكم زملائنا كان معكم الدكتور عبد الله الموسوي من نقابه اطباء الاسنان بالعراق وحاليا راح ننهي المحاضره لهذا اليوم وان شاء الله نلتقيكم بالجزء الثاني الاعلان عنه مثل ما وضحت في المكتب الاعلامي نقابه اطباء الاسنان شكرا, شكرا جزيلا لكم شكرا لكم شكرا لكم كل عام وانتم بخير